This was Kim Jong-un on August 10th, 2022 with Foja's soccer team hooligans. What I meant was the eradication of coronavirus from North Korea. Quite the announcement, especially considering that in Pyongyang, the pandemic had only started a few months earlier. Or at least, that's what the Korean Central News Agency, the only North Korean news agency and a vehicle for the regime's propaganda, claimed. What a joke. But there's a catch. The KCNA statements don't need the Supreme Leader's approval, but someone else's. What you just saw is Kim Yo Jung, and she's not just any North Korean Communist Party official. She's, as the surname suggests, Kim Jong Un's younger sister. But make no mistake, her position isn't due to nepotism. Since 2014, Kim Yo Jung has been leading North Korea's Department of Publicity and Information, what we might call the regime's propaganda ministry. Plus, since 2021, she's been part of the State Affairs Commission, Pyongyang's supreme governing body with only 13 members, and she's the only woman. Every single signature, official communication, nuclear threat, and aggressive statement towards the West is approved by Kim Yo-jong, who never misses a chance to call South Koreans idiots, human scum, and US puppets. Those were the nicer insults. We'll see some more colorful ones, very colorful. You might think Kim Yo-jong is at the top of the regime thanks to her brother's favor. Not really. In recent years, Kim Jong-un's inner circle has changed, except for his sister. All things considered, the North Korean dictatorship is currently a diarchy, a Janus figure where Jong-un is the frontman, the tank, while Yo Jung is the right arm, the supporter, the power behind the throne. A significant break from the male-centric past of the Kim dynasty and Pyongyang's Communist Party. So you might wonder, how did this person come to have such an important role in North Korean politics? If you want the simple answer, her destiny has always been inseparably linked to his brothers. But if you're curious like me about the reason behind this, there's nothing left to do but take a look at the Kim family tree. Kim Jong-un is the son of Kim Jong-il, who in turn was the hero of Kim Il-sung, the founding father of North Korea, as well as the creator of one of the most pervasive personality cults in contemporary history. We've talked about this already in several videos on this channel. However, the dynastic succession from grandfather to grandson wasn't always a given. For instance, Kim Il-sung married two women and had a total of six children. The most famous of his wives is definitely Kim Jong-suk, who gave birth to Kim Jong-il and Kim hyung hee Kim kyung hee was the first North Korean woman to become a general chief of staff and was the wife of the late Jang song tae until his execution by his nephew Kim Jong-un in 2013. He was considered the second most powerful man in North Korea. Kim Il-sung had two other daughters, about whom not much is known, and two sons who died young, and the other, Kim pyong il who served multiple times as ambassador in countries like the Czech Republic, Poland, Finland, Bulgaria and Hungary, and yes, it might sound strange, but North Korea has about 150 embassies around the globe, even in Rome. Keep in mind the embassy thing, we'll need it in a bit. After Kim Il-sung's death in 1994, Kim Jong-il was a natural successor to the Pyongyang throne, as essentially the only male son member of the State Affairs Commission. Unlike his father, Kim Jong-il was more libertine. Stick with me because this is where it gets interesting. Kim Jong-il married his first wife in 1966, by his father's will. They had a daughter and divorced three years later. Then, the Supreme Leader had an illegitimate relationship with Song Hye-rim, a North Korean actress, and in 1971, produced his first son, Kim Jong-nam. Initially hidden from Kim Il-sung, Jong-nam was long considered the natural successor as Supreme Leader. Not satisfied, in 1974, Kim Jong-il married a second woman, had two daughters whose faces we still don't know, and then divorced. The dictator finally ended his marital spree in 1980, when he married his official first lady. Only then did Kim Jong-il become the father of his future successor, Kim Jong-un, and his sister, Kim Yo-jong. But the plot twists of this North Korean soap opera aren't over yet. Yong-un and Yo-jong have an older blood brother, Kim Jong-cho. In other words, Kim Jong-un was only the third choice after his brother, and no less after his half-brother, Kim Jong-nam. So how did this miracle happen? We need to talk about embassies again. To receive a first-class education, 
All of Kim Jong-il's children studied in Bern, Switzerland, where the North Korean embassy is located in the Liebefeld district. Ironic, the leader of the North Korean Workers' Party studying in the heart of the capitalist financial state par excellence. We know that Kim Jong-un and Kim Yo-jong arrived in Switzerland in 1996, where they stayed until 2011. Here to live undisturbed, the two young Kims were provided with fake passports and equally fake names, respectively Pak On and Pak Mi Yang. Fun fact, Kim Jong-un had another fake passport, Brazilian nationality, under the name of Josef Puak, issued in 1996 at the Brazilian embassy in Prague. Even the father, Kim Jong-il, owned a similar passport. What can we say? This is how mafia works. Anyway, during their Swiss chapter, up until 2010, Kim Jong-un and his sister were practically unknown. This worked in their favor, the same can't be said of their older siblings. At the dawn of the new millennium, Kim Jong-nam seemed unsure of his future as supreme leader and even advocated for the liberalization of North Korea's economy. Worse, in 2001, he was caught at Tokyo's Narita Airport with a fake Dominican passport using a Chinese alias. The reason for this secret Tokyo visit? He wanted to visit Disneyland. Seriously. Because of this, he was sent to China, and Kim Jong-il cancelled a state visit to Beijing in embarrassment. Later, Kim Jong-nam was essentially exiled and mysteriously killed at Kuala Lumpur Airport in 2017 by two women with nerve gas. The Wall Street Journal suggested Kim Jong-un's half-brother was taken out for being a CIA informant. Kim Jong-chol, on the other hand, was caught in Germany in 2006, ready to attend an Eric Clapton concert. A huge mistake, repeated in 2011, when he was spotted in Singapore, again, at an Eric Clapton concert. Today, he's a guitarist in Pyongyang. Kevin Deloka. In Pyongyang, they have a beer festival, though. <laughs> beer aside, it was a grim end for the two brothers. What a family saga, but it cleared the path for our current leader, Kim Jong-un. At the end of 2011, Kim Jong-il died of a heart attack. At his funeral on December 28, 2011, a 28-year-old Kim Jong-un was seen accompanying the coffin through the weeping crowd. Beside him in the North Korean generals, however, was a girl never seen before. In the first years of her brother's supreme leadership, that girl began appearing at various public events and quietly climbing the ranks of the Communist Party, though no one knew who she actually was. Now an adult, in 2014, Kim and his entourage promoted her to head the Department of Publicity and Information. Coincidentally, in May of the same year, the KCNA called South Korean President Park geun ye a derogatory term, and Barack Obama, and here we quote literally and disassociate, a crossbreed with unclear blood. It would be perfect for Obama to live with a group of monkeys in the world's largest African natural zoo and lick the breadcrumbs thrown by spectators. Without the world knowing, this spicy statement was the calling card of Kim Yo-jong, the supreme leader's sister. And deep down, I want to believe it too. Kim Yo-jong is a real drama queen. She knows how to stage a scene. We saw proof in 2018, during the Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea. At the time, South Korean President Moon Jae-in, elected in 2017, was open to dialogue with North Korea, which was about to complete its nuclear program. So. Kim Jong-un proposed sending a North Korean delegation to attend the opening ceremony of the Olympics, with North and South Korean athletes would symbolically march under a single flag. What was the real showstopper? When they landed in Seoul, the North Korean delegation appeared in a peculiar formation. Leading them was Kim Yong-chol, Pyongyang's intelligence chief, but right by his side stood none other than Kim Yo-jong. With her stern and commanding gaze, elegant yet firm posture, and a smile that was both accommodating and somewhat unsettling. Attention on her grew after the Winter Olympics opening ceremony, where she sat in the VIP section just behind US Vice President Mike Pence. Moreover, Kim Yo-jong stood out during the subsequent meeting with Moon Jae-in at the Blue House, the historic seat of Seoul's government. Only later, it was known that this woman was none other than Kim Jong-un's sister. Sending her to South Korea was a meticulous, calculated move. According to South Korean researcher Cheong Song Chang, interviewed by German broadcaster DW, Kim Jong-un wanted his sister to personally see Seal, 
and give him an honest opinion about South Korea, something impossible for any other subordinate since any positive observation about the enemy country would be seen as admiration. Additionally, South Koreans admired Kim Yo-jong like some kind of idol, creating hundreds of memes about her that even reached us. In the end, it seemed like she represented another signal of peace sent by Pyongyang's regime. Remember when the United States and North Koreans teamed up in 2007 to fight Somali pirates? Sounds like fiction, but it's not. The ultimate dream team. Perhaps remembering this fantasy, dialogues between the sides continued throughout 2018 and beyond. In April, Moon Jae-in and Kim Jong-un met in the demilitarized zone at the 38th parallel, in Pan Moon where the armistice between the two Koreas was signed in 53. There, the two presidents signed the Pan Moon Declaration, a commitment to finally cease hostilities between the two Koreas and started the constructions of the inter-Korean liaison office. Furthermore, in June, Donald Trump agreed to meet Kim Jong-un in Singapore, after calling him Rocket Man, in front of the UN General Assembly. Rocket Man is on a suicide mission for himself. So we're signing a very important document, pretty comprehensive document. The document Trump mentioned was an unspecified attempt to denuclearize North Korea. Kim Yong-jong was present at each of these summits and meetings. However, the presence of Kim Jong-un's sister, the princess who would unify the two Koreas, turned out to be nothing more than a political move, a mass weapon of distraction. In 2019, Trump and Kim met two more times, one in Hanoi and in Panmunjom. Yet, as the world focused on the potential peace between the two Koreas, Kim's regime conducted over 20 missile tests, reminding the Western world not to play tricks because he has the bomb. The big one. In October, the Supreme Leader rode a white horse to the snow-capped peak of Mount Paktu, a stratovolcano on the border with Russia. <laughs> Sounds like a fairy tale, but it's not. This peak is a crucial symbol of the Kim dynasty, as Kim Il-sung, the nation's founder, claimed it as his ancestral birthplace. Kim Jong-il was supposedly born in a cabin on the peak of Mount Paektu in 1942. Ah, joke, that's also a propaganda move. Kim Jong-il was born in 1941, in a Soviet military base with another name, Yuri Senivoch Kim. Try having a baby in a cabin. 2,500 meters up in minus 30 degrees? Anyway, Kim Jong-un's clumsy ride was certainly meant to glorify the missile test, but also and especially to legitimize two women in front of the nation, his wife and his sister, Kim Yong-jong. Given the symbolic importance of Mount Paektu, it's not heresy to think that in case of Kim Jong-un's premature death, who like his father and grandfather might suffer from heart problems and obesity, his sister could replace him as supreme leader. And this could be a problem, because if North Korea is already ramping up missile tests in recent weeks, Kim Yo-jong's record as Prime Minister of Propaganda is anything but peaceful. After meeting him two years earlier in 2020, the Minister of Propaganda called Moon Jae-in a lackey of the United States, an American-raised parrot, a madman, and a wretch, and in June literally blew up the inter-Korean liaison office left unused because of the start of the COVID pandemic. Too bad. It would have been a great opportunity to set up some nice free Wi-Fi in North Korea so that the farmers in the countryside of Pyongyang could see that the outside world isn't a desolate wasteland where people eat pigeons to survive. Again, there are no birds in the trees apart from these, which will be eaten on Tuesday. You can also eat the snow, of which there is plenty in the United States. And maybe in North Korea, another North would have started ruling, NordVPN, the sponsor of this video, North Korea VPN. Please, NordVPN, don't sue me. NordVPN actually works in South Korea, so if you want to watch some K-pop musicals from Italy, you're welcome. And if you're visiting Korea, the South, because in the North at most you'll visit the empty hotel of Pyongyang strictly without internet, NordVPN is crucial for connecting to public Wi-Fi networks, which are anything but secure. For added security, there's Kill Switch, a feature that blocks internet access in case of VPN connection loss. This is useful when you don't want to expose your IP address, not even for a millisecond. Journalists and bloggers operating in risky countries make extensive use of features like this. And if you're just ordinary like me, it's still useful for blocking micro-targeting for advertising purposes. Not sure what that is? Check out our video on Cambridge Analytica. Worried about what NordVPN does with your data? The answer is nothing. 
confirmed by Deloitte's independent audit. NordVPN doesn't track you, and it's one of the few VPNs that do so. Using this link from Novalexio, you'll not only get an exclusive discount, but also four extra months free, plus the NordPass password manager as a gift with a plus plan. As always, all this comes with a 30-day satisfaction or money-back guarantee. But now back to her story. In 2022, the new South Korean president, Yong Suk-yeol, proposed sending economic and food aid to coronavirus strike in North Korea in exchange for nuclear de-escalation. Kim Yo-jung's response was as follows. What matters is the fact that the South Korean puppets are still thrusting leaflets and dirty objects into our territory. The KCNA, Kim Yo-jung's words basically, added, No one trades their destiny for a corn cake. I think for a soccer tort, I would. Long live soccer torts. Throughout 2023, the North Korean propaganda boss threatened to nuclearize South Korea. At the end of the year announced an imminent conflict, and almost a month ago called Yoon Sok Yil stupidly brave, while Moon Jae-in, his predecessor, would be very smart. But wait, wasn't Moon just an American-raised parrot? And more importantly, is North Korea really preparing for a war against the South? Just a few days ago, at the start of 2024, Kim supposedly removed from the Constitution the goal of reunifying the two Koreas, possibly aiming to eliminate the Southern one. Let's remember something. Between kindergarten insults and nuclear threats, we must always be careful to discern the truth from propaganda when it comes to the Pyongyang regime. Indeed, the Kim proclamations could aim to destabilize the already precarious political climate of South Korea. On one hand, it seems that Kim Yo-jong is gradually placing the authority of her brother Kim Jong-un, who appears to be in poor health. Yet recently, the Supreme Leader introduced his 10-year-old daughter, Ju Ai, also indicated as a possible future heir. Kim Jong-un also has an older son, who, however, does not enjoy the same prominence as his little sister. What game are the North Korean leaders playing? It's more important than ever to ask ourselves this because the future of North Korea might not be so predictable. Let's reflect on something. Theoretically, if Kim Jong-un were to die prematurely for any reason, his leadership would pass to his sister, Yo Zhang, who would govern until Zhu Ai comes to age. If, however, Kim Jong-un lives a long life and his son remains in the dark, Zhu Ai would become the next supreme leader. Both scenarios are potentially explosive. First, it'll be interesting to see if Kim Yo Jong will agree to step aside for her niece, if she'll try to maintain power, and especially how many people among the military ranks would be on her side. Secondly, it will be fascinating to see if North Korea's high society will accept women as the next rulers. Either way, the rise of Kim Yo Jong, the most powerful woman in Pyongyang and beyond, teaches us one important thing. Even the most granite dictatorships can be molded like terracotta. Pera, pera.